Everyone's here. And last time you all finished, or you started uh, exploring the actual manor at Iris Hill, and you've cleared you cleared all but two rooms on um, the second floor. You've got the uh, down at the south end of the map. Uh, you got one staircase going up. You got one staircase going down. And let's see. And we, we did also not... have this unconscious person. Yeah, you all had tied her up, if I remember correctly. Yes, and I hit her again for good measure with more land lethal damage to make sure she stayed out for the next few hours. Probably well, we could finish exploring this place and then haul her back to the detectives. Also, um, guys, I want to tell you about the kind of religious experience I had lately. I was sitting there, and then all of a sudden, like, the clouds parted, and this dwarf with a giant great axe, like, descended from the heavens, shouting, I am Ugar, and I have returned. <laughs> Do you accept your Lord and Savior, your savior Ugar? Ungar, what are you talking course. about? Ungar's been here the whole time. Ungrad. Ungrad is my own god, man. I figured he was just uh, drunk in a corner. <laughs> that does sound like him. <laughs> and Poppy. <laughs> Maybe that wine was too good. So. All right, well, uh, I mean, that staircase probably leads just down to the first floor where we already explored most of it. I say we hit the upper floor and make sure nothing, like, tries to get out that way. And that's the uh, staircase going up. Any objections to that idea? Nope. Not okay. really. No. Okay, we go up again. Okay, uh, as you all start up, uh, would you like to roll a perception check? I see everything. Yeah, with that score, you can probably see sound. <laughs> uh, the, scare, the staircase leading up is um, dirty, dusty, and there's a lot of thick cobwebs hanging everywhere. And as you ascend the staircase, uh, you can hear a frightful moan coming from up top. Oh, you changed the background image. Yes, I did. And... Well, I'm assuming that at least Sith heard the same frightful wail, but for Ugar and possibly Eric's benefit, I will relay the information that it sounds like there's something less than friendly upstairs. Yeah, Ugar's too caught up into his god complex to hear it. <laughs> yes. Well, that score, he probably didn't even hear me tell him. That's probably the hangover. Less than friendly upstairs. Uh, that's probably the hangover. I'm not really paying attention or anything. And let's see. Bigger and Poppy. 
Ugar and Steth and Eric at the back. Nice penthouse. If you can call it that. Welcome to the attic. Looks like there's a lot of stuff stored up here. Oh boy, loot. And let's see. Um, as you come up, um, this large attic area has a slanted ceiling supported by uh, wooden trusses, beams, and rafters. Um, the ceiling slopes down from the highest beam in the middle to the lowest on the perimeter. And you see several ugly fibrous plants sprouting from clay pots. And uh, they're barely illuminated by the uh, dormer windows. The air, you smell dust and decay and mold. Uh, the middle of the ceiling is uh, roughly 15 foot high. And I'll put them twice on the combat tracker. If it's anything like my attic, you're probably going to be crouching by the time you get to any of the walls. Uh, uh, the ceiling's like 15 foot in the center and north near the walls, it goes down to, uh, about six foot, so you should be able to stand without any problem. And as you enter the stairs, um, you see, you hear a voice um, say, stay away. And it seems to be coming from uh, deeper in the attic. We're just here to talk and help if we can. Stay away. Go away. And it is a uh, female voice. Well, that's quite rude. Couldn't we at least introduce ourselves first? I'd like to try to make a diplomacy check of 18. No, go away. Don't look at me. There we go. And I muttered that under my breath. <laughs> and the voice um, seems to be retreating deeper into the attic. Forward, I guess. Yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing any better than Eric did. No, you're sure not. Um, who has shiny armor? <laughs> I mean, my armor is uh, literally made of mithril, so that's probably shiny. No, well, I mean, considering that we've been running around killing shit, I don't think any of our armor is particularly shiny at this point. Okay, um... And 
Poppy, from where you're standing, you can still hear very faint now, like it's coming from the extreme far side of the attic. Stay away. Leave me alone. So, and as you're looking around the attic, naturally, you're seeing boxes and crates of, you know, just crap that's been stored there over the years. And so, uh, anyone going to, uh, Follow the voice into the attic. Father into the darkness. Although it's daylight and there's light coming through the windows. <laughs> Are you sure you don't need any help? And... Uh, she's, uh, leave me alone. And Poppy, you can't see. From over in the corner. Where the hell would you see that? And I got an image somewhere. And you can see this woman. <laughs> And she's um, quite, quite grotesque looking. And she's, uh, I told you all to stay away. But you can't see her over in the uh, far side of the attic. And you're all welcome to uh, continue with uh, diplomacy checks. I don't know. That's the kind of body image issue that might require a natural 20. I and... just want to talk. It's not quite a natural 20. <laughs> Close enough. Well, um, she, um, she's kind of sh uh, shielding her face and so forth from you, but, uh, she goes, um, what is it you want from me? I mean, I don't think technically anything. We didn't know you were here. We're not we weren't looking for you or anything, but maybe you could help us by telling us what's been going on. We work for Mr. Count Lyles. Uh, did you ever see us? Um, no, I, I don't leave the attic. 
Could I do like a knowledge local check to try and see if it's someone that maybe we should know, like uh, a person that would normally we would know around town or whatever? Or? Uh, normally, yes, but uh, she goes, so you work for my son. Oh, well, so I'd say the knowledge local check was successful. Oh, you're Count Lao's mother? Why does he have you here? Uh, I stay up here out of sight due to my condition. Uh, not main character on a metal level for a second. Like, am I able to tell? Is she like some type of undead? Is she kind of some type of aberration with strange growths? Or is this like some kind of disease but that doesn't reclassify her? Am I able to tell? Uh, she is an aberration, uh, with, uh, strange growths. Okay. And let's see. I might be able to use my knowledge to figure out with a 26, uh, what type of great strange growths they might be, like what exactly has happened to her. Uh, with the 26, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's see, climbs. Uh, with with that, you can figure out that um, she's got some sort of wasting disease, and she's she's like, wasting disease that is making stuff grow on her. Isn't that kind of the opposite of a wasting disease? Yes, you would think so. Um, Hope I'm wasting away. What do you mean, man? You've gained 300 pounds in the last two weeks. I'm wasting away. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. Um, yeah, she's... Um, you have... Uh, I don't want to use the word cursed, but you figure she's cursed or, you know, um, why don't you try uh, knowledge religion? I think that's also 26. Yeah, 26. Great scores. Um, you figure that she was probably the recipient of some occult ritual gone gone wrong. And uh, she tells you all, you know, um, when she's talking about you work for my son, you notice uh, what little bit of softness that was temporarily in her voice uh, has turned to like an anger. Uh, can I try to sense motive and figure out if she's mad at her son? Like if her son, like a 27, can I figure out whether that's because she's angry at her son and her son did something to her or something else entirely? Uh, you can tell that she's probably angry with her son. Well, if it's any comfort, uh, Mrs. Laws, we don't work for him any longer. We saw some of the stuff that he did. And we're trying to help stop him now and help the people he hurt, which looks like it might be you, too. Uh, you want to throw a, another diplomacy on that one? Good. I hate that little bastard. 
maybe you could tell us like what he did to you and maybe we could help we've been like i said we've been helping the people of the town here we've helped put a lot of stuff right maybe we can help you uh he caught me or he found out that i was having a fair with climbs and in order to uh let's see is climb somebody we should know the name rings a bell. Dr. Climbs Pret. Let's see. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, actually, he's the bookseller in Rosenport. Um. Uh, my my husband uh Lau's father uh suspected that I was having an affair with this bookseller and uh, well we decided that uh you know instead of to incur his wrath um uh, we were going to perform a ritual to uh, infect my husband with this disease. But um, something went wrong and part of it, um, part of it uh, affected me. And my son comes up here periodically just to uh, Torment me. Uh, That's not very nice of him. Should treat his mother better. Well, he's mad at his mother uh, for, you know, cheating on his father. And he just comes up here periodically to bring me food and just to torment me. And as she's telling the story, um, you can tell that she's uh, growing even more angrier over the retelling of the story. And she's like... Uh, all my son cares about is, you know, the star's delay and what it's capable of doing. Do you know what it's capable of doing? Uh, <clears throat> It's it's been a long time. Uh, let's see. Married, raised her son. Um, my son uh, followed my belief that they are more than what people think that they are. Um, a lot of people um, believe that there are monuments erected by Sarkaki. Sar they uh, are Sar Sarkorian, Sarkorian uh, god callers. But 
research seems to indicate that they are truly older than that and that they are artifacts related to the cults of the great old ones. And it's uh, said that some of the research I've performed, uh, they allow you to transport to different worlds. And she looks at you and says, you know, if you want to know more, then uh, go down to the basement and see it for yourself. Well, how do we get there? Uh, there is a trap door in the library. We haven't seen a library yet, have we? Uh, no, you haven't. Uh, however, not giving away anything, uh, you've got one more room on the ground floor you haven't been in. <laughs> <laughs> and... Sounds like you're pretty knowledgeable about all this stuff. That's quite impressive. Well, I spent many years before the incident uh, researching the occult. And, you know, it was through my research that I met Climbs. And, you know, we uh, discovered we had mutual interest and uh, eventually become lovers. What wound up happening to your husband? Was your ritual successful? Uh, for the most part. Um, yeah, Climbs was uh, the guy. Let's see. You had found him in, I think he was the guy that the Count brutally murdered. Repeat that last sentence or two, sir. Um, give me just a second. Um, on a search for it. Um, oh, why? There wasn't. Y'all had found one guy walled in, correct? Wait, that's what it was. Clamps Pratt was the ghost, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, okay. So hang on, the bookseller that they said left town was actually the ghost? Because uh... the Razenfort, we said the bookshop owner went to Razenfort, but apparently they said that was Dr. Clamps who was actually like murdered and turned into a ghost instead. Uh, yes, he was. And, um, Still yes, resin for it, right? That's how it is. Let's see. <laughs> now the DM is laughing. Everybody run. <laughs> um, yeah, let me find the bookseller again. How do we even figure out the ghost's name? I'm trying to remember.
Yeah, uh, apparently he had. When did his dad die? Because you never met with the bookseller. You just found his abandoned. And we were told by the person across from him that he had gone to Rosenfort. Yes. Um, the Count's father before. Um, they were unable. They were able to inflict this disease upon her husband. But before he died, um, he found concrete evidence of their affair. And um, as you know, he had him arrested, interrogated, and ultimately killed. And then a few days later, the Count's father actually died. And I have... Uh, sequestered myself here in the manor ever since and very few people ever see me and you can tell uh due to her isolation that you know she's uh erratic and probably just a little bit mad I don't we don't have any, any way, way to do to like a... undo what's been done to her. Uh, no. Rip. And she's like, uh, I've told you all that I will tell you. Please leave me alone now. Well, what will you do now that your son is gone? I mean, you'll starve if you just stay here. Well, my son is not dead, you know, I... <clears throat> uh, I think I will be okay. He left and is going on a long expedition. He's not going to be back for weeks or months. Leave me alone. Okay. Go away. I, I do have... Uh, I have other ways of taking care of myself. I'm going to shrug and walk away for now. Yeah. If she's not going to try and attack us and she doesn't want help with anything, then I see no reason to hang around. We don't have any way to check her alignment, do we? Do not believe so. No one spoke up. <laughs> I mean, if Ugar has, like, maybe protection from evil, he could cast it on someone and that person could tackle her. But other than that, no, probably not. Right. Well, the way I look at it is this, right? She seems kind of crazy, and she... I mean, on one hand, she... She had an husband, but, you know, there's no, we don't know what their relationship is. We don't know how they were forced to marry in the first place, if it was forced or whatever. Um, obviously, she seems to be into the, like, cold and these old things and then tried to kill him with the disease, and that part's not so great. But it's possible we might find something and want to see if we can weedle more information out of her. Whereas, I, you know, if we killed her now, like, that option's removed, you know? Yeah, she could be a uh, valuable source of crazy information or not.
So, shall we go to the library? No, yes, I, I don't want to go to the library. Can we go to the first floor, the uh, room we haven't gone to yet? Uh, yes, which uh, you get there by going down the other stairwell on the second floor. And where do everybody's tokens go? I generally just drag them from the combat track again, frankly. And there's stuff. Eric, Poppy. Uh, as you descend the stairs, um, you enter this room, a large room with um, the walls of the room are lined with uh, floor to ceiling bookshelves laden with bound tomes, parchments, parchment scrolls and stacks of paper. Uh, the shelves are stuffed full and are sagging under the weight of the contents. Uh, there's a dozen amber colored crystal lights fixed to the, fixed to the walls. And you see um, three more lamps standing on two central tables and a desk. But there's nothing moving in here so far that we see. Uh, give me just a second. Uh, as you come into the library, yes, you do see a creature. And To the bookworm? You wish. <laughs> and over in the far corner, you see this monstrosity of a creature. Um, is it literally cut off at the waist like that? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. No, it is not. It actually is a full person, not just the upper torso. Correct. But apparently with a tongue that's like ten times too long. Yeah, she's got a, uh, let me pull up the right creature here. No, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> you see a disembodied female torso flapping through the air on bat-like wings. Her so it is just the torso now? It is just the torso. Okay. And... Uh, go ahead and roll for initiative. And Amara comes up. Library, everything else gets closed. Well, I don't care if that thing is friendly or not. It's ugly. It's going down. 
the so it's all these creatures where, where it's like, oh, well, the, is it, should we just beat it into submission or be nice to it or maybe it'll answer questions or now this one. Every once in a while, it's nice. To like, okay, that's a monster. I can just club it to death and be, move on with my life. The unconscious lady should probably come off the combat tracker. And let's see. Everybody's on there that needs to be. Everyone is showing up. And Steph, uh, you get to go first, buddy. All right. I wish I had bombs or something. Um, <laughs> I can toss. Uh, I guess I could toss it. Uh, well, no, I'm just going to. Um, these are just low tables, right? Like we can see over them. They're not. Yeah, correct. Okay. So I, I can move behind it and still fire my arrow. I'm not obstructing myself. So I'm just going to go to like here. And then I'm just going to, I don't know how well it'll work, but I'll try the longbow. We'll go from there. It is a magic longbow. So. Oh, I should have, uh, sorry. Did it hit? You did hit. Okay. Oh, damn it. Fuck, really? Seriously? Damn it. Um, I'm guessing this is some kind of undead, given it's a torso. Uh, ah, yes, it is. Are they 26? Uh, what are we able to discover or tell about it? Uh... <clears throat> First of all, let's see. Uh, naturally, uh, the torso um, is able to uh, fly. Um, you know that it is vulnerable to lightweight blades such as daggers um kukri's uh rapier short swords sickles and star knives it's vulnerable to those uh yes uh they uh deal uh double the weapons base damage and what other kind of defenses does it have am i able to tell why yes <laughs> era didn't do anything um Yes, uh, it's uh, got damage resistant, good or silver, um, and it is sensitive to light. Hmm. Do I know how resistant it is to good or silver? Uh, with that score, it's a DR-10. Okay. Translation, I can't scratch it, Sith can't scratch it. Ah! Stupid flying monsters. Um, well, I guess I technically could scratch it because I do have a rapier, but it's things I think it's gonna get kind of ugly so um I'm gonna go ahead and you start inspiring courage things that seems like it could be pretty nasty I'm gonna just move up to there. Okay, Poppy. I'm going to move there. Let's 
So is this thing only vulnerable to those specific light weapons or all light weapons? Um, uh, anything that's uh, got a blade and would be considered a light weapon. Short swords, sickles, uh -huh. star knives. So throwing my light shield at it wouldn't really do anything? No. No. Rip. Can I consider... If you want a full-blown thing, go to that and look at the category light blades. Can I consider uh, an axe a blade? It's, there might be a blade, it's not a light blade. Okay. And I cannot it's double okay. move and attack, right? Well, actually, I wouldn't be able to double move and get to it anyway, so I'll just... I guess a partial double move to about here, and I don't want to get too close if I can't attack it, so I'll just hang out there. And wait, can I double move and ready an action? Uh, can you double move what, sir? And double ready move. an action? I mean, by the rules, no. All right, well, then I'll just hang out there. I ask to Eric that you usually know the weakness of the monsters. It is really hard. Uh, sh uh, should I use fire? Don't think it makes a difference. Mm. Okay then. Uh, and now uh, we're ready and attack. Okay, um... You can tell that she starts uh, casting a spell, if anyone would like to make a uh, spell craft. And... Uh, Eric, you and Sith... Um, know that she is casting deep slumber. Casting time one round. And Steph, you are up. So she, the spell hasn't actually gone off yet. She just it's a one round action. She can still be interrupted. Okay, um, so I will move one, two, three, four, five, six. I can move to there. I'm going to cast uh, Vomit Swarm. I don't think the spiders will damage her, but can't well can they still distract her though only like i don't think that's really going to help and then we can't hit her without getting in the swarm uh damn it um okay in that case uh i can toss the uh alchemist fire on her but didn't we determine that fire couldn't get past her damage reduction no all 
Yay, I did something. If she takes damage, is there a chance that her spells is disrupted? Yes, that's the whole idea. You have to make a concentration check, right? Yep. 17, that's a third level spell. Add. Uh, yes, she did uh, succeed on her concentration check. So she was DC 17 and she made it, right? Yep. Bitch. Okay. Upper torso, bat wing having bitch. <laughs> um, I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to try to hit her. Since I can't offer flanking or anything. That apparently hit. Okay, I am using a rapier. So that does double the base weapon damage, you said? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to roll a d6. I get a 2. So I add 2 damage onto the damage that I do. Seem fair? That'll work. So I do 4 damage. So 4 plus whatever spell. What, what spell is Deep Slumber? 3. So... Uh, DC 17 concentration check again? Uh, yeah, I rolled it while you were, uh, rolling your initial dice, and yes, uh, hmm, she succeeded extremely well. Damn it! And she needs well, to do more than four. And, yeah, that would be two extra points. Okay, Poppy. Well, rough. I tried. I, I did say to hit as hard as you could. But did not have a power attack. Can I charge from here? Here? Yeah, I'll let you do that. Okay. I miss. Oh, and you all are level six. Is that good or bad? And let's see, Poppy, you hit, so I need to make a concentration check. I believe it was the best last game in. I don't remember being level six. Was I? Uh, yeah, you're level six. <laughs> that's a that's the last game or not? It's been that way for several games since before we came here. No, no, okay, okay, then. Yeah, I I think you all leveled up right before the game that you missed. Uh, believe my mind is playing trick with me. And Ugar, as uh, you swing and miss, um, Poppy as well, you notice that she's still concentrating on the spell. And I get to affect up to 20 hit dice worth of monsters, which would be the three of oh, you guys. How, how do we get that? <laughs> it's a mythic deep slumber? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Sif, now that's with you. <laughs> what do you mean, mythic deep slumber? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. This is yeah, you, you're right. You're right. No, it's it's just deep slumber, not mythic. Damn it. So, who hit her last? That would be Poppy. Poppy, I need you to uh... choose me. Choose me. I Make some sort will. of will save. Oh man. Uh wait. Uh 
Yeah, that's a good will save. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, you did manage to. Um, you get sleepy for just a second, and it. Um, you get over it. You're wide awake, and she's really pissed off that. Um, she has no know, leg. Yeah, that you're not asleep, and she strikes at you with two of her. She strikes at you with her claws, and the first one misses, and the second one does indeed hit you. For not very much damage, and there's CM. And as her claws grab a hold of you, um, you're able to uh, shake her off, and she does not manage to grab a hold of you. And so okay, uh, I guess I've got nine more alchemist spires. I'll just keep launching these, I guess. Since they uh, keep in mind that if you're launching those at this point, it is hitting us with splash damage. I didn't think the alchemist spire had the splash damage. I know bombs do. All throwing weapons like that have splash damage. Okay, let me. Um... Let me check something real quick then. Hold on here. Give me just a second. For future reference, I would probably make sure you get uh, cold iron arrows and apply a silver blanch to them. I'll give you the ability to bypass silver or cold iron for like the cost of half a gold or something or less per arrow. Right. Anyway, I don't, you know, I don't know. I guess I, shit. Well, if the splash damage would hit you guys and my arrows can't really hurt her, then I guess I'll just hold my action. Uh, why don't you uh, make a perception check, if you would, Steph? That I can do. Or maybe not. Um, as as you're fiddling around trying to grab stuff out of your your bombs and weapons and so forth, um, you notice the other half of her torso underneath the stairs. Oh yeah, that uh, is it. Just standing there. Ah, uh, well, it's kind of like laying there. Okay, I can I can definitely burn that. Maybe it'll hurt her somehow, though. So, um, yeah, give me okay. just a second, and we'll give you a target. If they're just laying there, can I just go over and uh, apply the uh, alchemist fire to it directly and torch it? It's a different idea. Coup de grat. Yeah, or if I could do that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think you can torch it because it's still going to be like a, I'd say living, but it's like an unliving part of the body probably. But in theory, I believe you could go over there and, and not this round, but next round do a coup de gras with your bow, which does times three damage, which means you have a good chance of punching through with the damage reduction. Yeah. Like I said, uh, burning a disembodied uh, torso, this is new new ground for me. <laughs> So okay, let me change my my whatever then. And so, how would I coup de grat? I just roll the damage, like move over there. 
and then do uh, roll damage? No, you'd have to. It's a full round action. So next round, you could do a coup de gras. You can't do anything else this round except move over there. Oh, OK. I guess I'll move over there. And ready your coup de gras. <laughs> I will ready my coup de gras. Um. I, mean, like, I don't want to abuse the GM's generosity, but given that, I mean, if I saw him doing that, I would probably go over there and attack the helpless torso, too, since I can't really do much to hurt her normally. Well, these are legs. Technically, you are att attacking the torso. You know what I mean. Sorry. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a DC 10 perception check. <laughs> okay, unless I roll a 1, I can beat that. <laughs> So, yeah, you, you do notice that he's moving over there, and you do see the body, or the bottom half of the torso. Okay, I'm going to do a withdraw action over to there. And I'm going to actually hold the last three rounds of my Inspired Courage. That's all I got left for the day, and finding this weakness, we might not need it. And the torso does not get a move. Poppy. Well, considering I'm uh, my job is the damage sponge, I'm going to five foot step this way and continue attacking the part of the body that seems to be alive. I can five foot step into a full attack, right? Yes. Oh, one one thing I did forget is when I did hit it with the one flask of, of Alchemist Fire, it should have taken another D6 points of damage the following round. Okay. You want to roll your dice and I'll plot? So give him another four. And you're right, the Alchemist Fire does. It's just one point of, of damage, though. It's not the like... three people. Well, yeah, I know I understand that, but... Splash damage from my bomb is like a minimum of six points. Alchemist fire, it's just one point. You got the points to spare. You guys are tough. Anyway. Okay, Ugar. Try and all there's left. Okay, and Poppy, uh, it kind of turns towards you and does a full attack. And you got a bite. And a claw. And she manages to latch on to you with uh, one of the claws, so effectively you are grappled. Okay, Steph. Okay, so I'm going to coup de gras this bad boy. So my damage is D8 plus 2. I mean, so, just draw a crit. Hold down shift. I mean, hold down he, shift. Should he technically target the mana nanogall thing for the coup de gras? 
Uh, yes, if you would. So I've targeted it. Now, how do I do a, a critical hit? You, you're not targeting the heat. You have the wrong target. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, untarget the torso and actually target the creature. So. Oh, okay. And then hold down shift and then click on double click on your damage. Okay. Yeah, that'll do it. And it's uh, it it is susceptible to critical hits, is it right? No, light blades. So it doesn't have to make the fortitude save and all that stuff. So if it's an undead, it can't die from full coup de grace, as far as I know. Okay, so basically we're over here clubbing on the legs, but the torso is taking the damage. Correct. They're basically linked. It's it's like you know, like a, a, a lich in their philanthropy or whatever, right? Like it's it's vulnerable. Right, right, right. Okay, I get it. No, but hey, well, I did 19 points of damage, so uh, good luck with that. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to roll a d6, and I got a 6. Okay, so I'm going to add in 6 to the modifier box. I only crit a times 2. So I only did... Uh, nine there, apparently. Yeah. Okay, Poppy, you are grappled, sir. Oh, when to mute. Um, yes. Is the extra D if it's dealing double the weapon space damage? Is that doubled base damage multiplied on the crit? Uh, you know, I would say that it would be. Because normally extra dice aren't. Like if you say you're fire flaming, that doesn't. But we're not saying you deal an extra 1d6. We're saying you deal double the base damage, right? Correct. But specifically, we're phrasing it as not extra dice. So, therefore, the 6 that was added on, so I should have been critting forward to 20, so that should have done an extra 6 damage, in effect. So, if I do this, that, yeah, there's this. I did that to the torso. I screwed, yeah, I, I, right. I did the whole thing wrong, I, even after I said it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I went ahead and applied the 6 to her. Oh, you're done. Okay. So if I remember correctly, so the last time I was grappled, someone said that means that I cannot use two-handed weapons, right? Mm-hmm. My turn. Or you could try to just break free. Yeah. So I just rolled my own CMD for that? CMD. Yeah, that's not happening. No. <laughs> uh, do I have a bonus to hit someone that's grappling? Mm -hmm. or that? oh. It's already built in. Do you remember how much is the bonus? Plus two, plus one? It's automatically built in. You don't have to adjust anything. That's it. Yay. Okay. Um, so you didn't use your power attack, I see. Yeah. That's a risk. Less than two attacks I miss. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, you would have done over twice the damage if you hit. And it's plus three. Plus six, six isn't it? No, no. It should be minus 2 AB plus 6 damage. Let me see. All 
Are you saying he should have power attacked or did? He should have power attacked, but didn't. And okay. It was intentional. He chose not to. There's not a, like it's something you need to change or anything. But I'm saying in the future, he really should have. Because even on a slightly above average damage roll, he only did four. He would have done ten if he was power attacking. You know, two and a half times the damage. Dr. Ten is just brutal without a way to bypass it or uh, doing a shit ton of damage per hit. Okay, but now I can. I should apply. Uh, remove two from attack and plus for damage. I mean, no. in the for future attacks, yeah. But this time, you, you already consciously chose that to not use power attack here. So yes, yes. Okay. Um, let's see, Eric. You could have growled as well. Um, as she. Uh, as you all drive your blades home and do your coup de gras, uh, when you strike the torso, she shrieks in pain. And doing so, um, she, she releases Poppy and starts to fly over to that over to where you're all at, which would provoke an attack of opportunity from both Poppy and Ugar. Yep. And you are able to turn on power attack before making an attack of opportunity if you wish to. Too late, I already rolled. Rip. Let me try the power attack. Miss. And Sith, so um, she tries to uh, bite you. She misses. Moving along. Nope, she hit. <laughs> or she bites me. Okay. <laughs> so, can I do the same thing to these legs, or... Yeah, you sure can. I mean, the coup de grad does provoke an attack of opportunity. That's fine. I mean, it's it's uh, it seems like it's easier to hit the immobile legs than than to hit the torso. So and I need. To... She manages to bite you again. You are coup de growling, right? Yeah. And she lands a nice solid bite on you. Oh, bitch is gonna pay for that. She licks her lips. Hey, we got her halfway dead. But of course, so am I. I am going to hope that uh, she doesn't have another attack of opportunity and find out for science. So I roll my dice and I get one. So that's two extra damage. And then I crit. The torso does. When I provoke, does she take an attack of opportunity? She needs what? Combat reflexes? Or uh, something similar, yeah. Let's see. I would say lightning reflexes, maybe? Mm, that should be a uh, reflex save only bonus. Lightning. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, she does not. Okay. So I crit with two extra damage. Deal eight damage, okay.
Alright, I have a stupid question. Can I charge and have a flanking bonus at the same time? Yep, who are you flanking with? Well, presumably Sif, if it counts while he's facing the opposite direction. He has a bow with his hands. Oh. So that means he does not provide flanking then? Mm-hmm. Correct. All right, whatever the charge is. You could me. manually walk to there instead and flank with me if you wished. Well, I could charge for a bonus on this round and then five foot step for a bonus on the other round, on the next round. Okay. So the charge bonus is plus two, right? Mm-hmm. Means you're suffering a minus two AC penalty this turn, but. If she's focusing the people who are attacking her legs, I think I'll be fine. Rolls a one. And the crowd goes silent. <laughs> Can I, I? I think I still have my use of eternal hope for the day. I think I'm can probably re-roll that. Yeah, I don't think you've used it for the day. Hey, there we go. That's going to leave a mark. There's oh, the one. There's the one. <laughs> <laughs> that can be only one. Come on, Ugar, make it happen. Mm, I'm thinking about a blast or a charge. What do you think, guys? I mean, if you were going to blast, the time to do that was like five rounds ago. <laughs> yes. Can I charge in a straight line like this? And hit? Uh, yeah, it doesn't. I would think so. So, <clears throat> go ahead and roll, and... And he misses. Holy shit. And she's going to do a full round attack on Sith. And manage, <laughs> manages to hit all three times. She doesn't scare me. Much. Oh, it was so nice knowing you. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm still good here. And she, uh, well, <clears throat> if she wanted to, you would have been grappled. <laughs> so I'm grappled? No, you are not. Okay. <laughs> But that was her decision. <laughs> <laughs> Very generous of her. Um, the coup de gras action, that's a full round action that provokes an act, act of opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, so I guess I'm not doing that. But I can take a five foot step. Like... This is under the stairs, right? Yes. Like, can I go there? Um, or is there no room there? I'd say you can go there with no problem. Okay. All right, I guess I'll go there then. I just want to get away from her. And then uh, what can I do to the legs now? Just a regular attack? 
Correct. Or I guess the only thing I have that can, I have a potion uh, of cure light wounds, but no like cure medium wounds. I would say you qualify. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I'll do a, uh, I'll do a potion of cure light wounds. And for some reason, I have the potion of cure moderate wounds. So I heal. You could have come over here and been doing power attack and coup de gras times three crits on this. So can you add seven back to my character sheet? Please? Yeah, sure can. I assume that's all my activities for this turn. Guys, I need you on the moon so you can attack for, for me. I'm going to take a five foot step and uh, yell, Hey, ugly, watch this, and try to stab her torso again, which provokes. And she misses you. Oh, sure. Miss him. Hope this hurts. Little bit. All right. I'm going to eat an attack of opportunity. Oh, wait. No, she already used her attack of opportunity. I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to do my own power attack, coup de gras. You can't. It's a full round action. Oh. Well, next round I will do it then. Do you want in, to attack? In the meantime, I'll power move? attack and attack her. Do you want to attack while flanking and then move over there? Yeah, sure. Fuck it. Why not? Miss any or not. Okay, Ugar. Where is your power attack, buddy? Oh, Poppy, could you drag your power attack over to Ugar? There you go. I'm back, I'm back. Sorry, guys. My grandmother is sick, and sometimes I have to help her. Oh, no problem. Uh, you're getting ready. Uh... Poppy applied power attack, so if you want to swing or... I will use something that I was forgetting, that sacred weapon. Do you want to fight foot step before attacking as well? Of course, that's a nice suggestion. Nice tip. Damn it! Holy shit! 18. I still miss. I don't think power attacks. But it, uh, it also has uh, damage resistance. It's a hard choice. Do you have the flank bonus on there? Uh, actually, mm -hmm. he you didn't add flanking, so that extra plus two you would have hit. Yes, yeah, there you yes. go. Yes. Like that bitch. And he manages to hit that bitch. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a kind of sad day when none of us are man enough to handle half a woman. 
<laughs> and let's see, Eric, you did a coup de grace, so she is targeting you. And gets three hits on Eric. Okay, so now I can take a full round action. Mm, dude, just now I just saw that you already have an effect of power attack. I was rolling my my also my attack with power attack, but uh, now I use the normal. So basically, you got even more AB penalties, but you also got more damage than you should have. Yes, yes, yes. So technically, you should have done six less damage. Yes, six less less damage, but there is some parlous partially resistant. Don't I don't really know how much damage should be subtracted. Nah, I took off six. Okay. Uh, I'm going to delay my initiative until after Poppy. How is this thing still alive? Well, uh, hang on, I, ac I accidentally hit the <laughs> active token, so drop 30 on the on the actual thing and see if it's still alive. Uh, no, it is not. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, on, on your... <clears throat> on your coup de gras, it manages to uh it screams out in horror and the flying upper half of the torso falls to the ground and chaps i think we've been a bit of a rough shape here eh? that's an understatement Yeah, if it hadn't been for the pot plants, uh, this scenario might have went totally different. <laughs> if it hadn't been for the what? Uh, for all the uh, living copararies, the pot plants that were attacking you when you were on the ground, when you were outside onto the grounds. Yeah. Um, so that is using nine charges of the Cure Light Wounds Wand. I could top people off, however, we are also down to five charges on the Cure Light Wounds Wand. Save it. I still have some channel energy, but we may be may use as fervors. Oh, okay. Are you, cause I, are you, do you want to save those for fervors? Because if not, this would definitely be a good time to have used them. Do you want to save them for fervors, though? I don't know how many fervors you need. Uh, every two fervors, I can use one channel energy. I have four fervor. So you can only channel energy twice, okay. I normally heal for like 12 each time or something. Probably better uh, to save 12, them for fervors. 12. 12. Um, how about this? How long would it take us? I mean, because right now it seems that we've gotten everything visible. There's the hole down there, which presumably at some point we need to explore. 
And there's a hidden trapdoor in this room. But beyond that, it seems we've cleared everything else out of this place, with the exception of Namir Laos and the unconscious chick upstairs, right? Yes. Yes, no, maybe so? Uh, yes, you have. So, I'm... I mean, if we leave, if we left for the entire day, it's still probably only like what four p.m. or something. Correct. So if we left for the entire day, that would potentially be kind of bad. But would we be able to take like fifteen to twenty minutes and like deposit the chick at the detective agency, tell them about the Namir Lau's crazy undead, not undead, but infested thing, and like buy another wand in town, and only take like a twenty to thirty minute excursion break for that? Uh, yeah, I would let you do that. And I think people have, we have some money stored up. Are we able to buy, like, another item or two while we're in town? Just, like, swoop in, grab it, swoop out. You know the way shopping should be done? Just no <laughs> lingering. Just get in, get out. Surgical strike. Wait a minute. Don't we have a woman in the party? Because I'll tell you right now. If that's oh, about, God. Then we're screwed. We're just going to, it's going to be an all-day thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. It's it's like, oh, my God. Idea, man. It's like Poppy's going to find TJ Maxx. And yes. gonna be stuck oh, my God, look at the shoes. <laughs> That's right. Three hours only to choose the color does, does, does of the Does the color ones. of these steel shoes match the blood on my armor? Yeah. <laughs> does Jimmy Choo make a wand? And the details <laughs> of the wand, how how they will match the, the carpet? You guys have so, a Gucci bag of holding? <laughs> So, what are the thoughts <laughs> on my uh, suggestion? I like it. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, one of you could, like, stay behind just to be a guard. But, yeah, I'd let you all uh, make a quick run to town. Okay. Uh, uh, what do people think about how much would it be? It's like 187.5 gold, I think. How does everyone feel about chipping in 188 gold to buy another wand of pure light woods? Absolutely, I'll mark it off. Fine with me. All right. Mine is marked off. I should upgrade my arrows to something that's better than just regular arrows. What do I have for options? Well, like I said, um, let's see, you're allowing like the ultimate books you said, right? Yes. So what you could do is, and this is going to start costing like half a gold per arrow, I think, if I did, did the math correctly. Let me double check this for you real sec, fast. I have 5,000 gold, so I'm not too yeah, concerned about Yeah, but at the same off. time, you might not, if you have free normal arrows, you might not want to start spending like, ten, you know, 10 gold per arrow and start firing them off. Well, but, right. I mean, but I'm just saying, when we get in a situation where we're fighting some obvious undead or something, and my, because like that last encounter kind of sucked. If 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 we hadn't have found the feet over there under the stairs, we'd still be there doing onesie twosie damage on it. So I'm not sure. I gotta say, I'm pretty disappointed in the alchemist at this point because once he's out of bombs, he's pretty much a useless tub of shit. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, you would with a dex based thing as well, right? And so it's like, yeah, well, if you're out of bombs, you need another way of doing something. And stuff with gear. Well, yeah, gonna hurt. and I mean, the, the, the bow and arrow work well because the, the feet, feet work out well, same precise shot, that sort of thing. But I just need a better oomph. Something else to throw besides just bombs. Okay, so what you can do is you can buy a silver blanche. And that costs five gold. And it coats ten ammunition. So if you spend ten gold, you could buy two silver blanches. And then another two, two gold on buying 20 cold iron arrows. And then you combine all that, and you get 12 gold, and in exchange you get 20 silver slash cold iron arrows, which allow you to bypass, you know, anything the fact that is affected by those. Right. So I'm looking at my weapon blanche here, silver, five gold. 
So basically, if you wanted to get like 20 of those arrows, in case of something like that, right, you could just spend uh, 12 gold, if 12 gold for every 20 arrows of that type you want, and then mark them down, and then we can set up an effect for that. And that can be like right. your secret weapon. All right, I ch marked off the charges for the wand. Or the gold for the wand. Do you have any objection to me picking up a belt of dexterity, Winter Mute? Uh, no, go ahead. I'm wondering if I should have. Well, no, uh, I don't really. I don't have any sort of uh, melee type weapon. All I've got is the bow and arrow. At some point, I should probably invest in some sort of sword or something. You could have done double damage with the dagger. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I'll have to look into that later. For now, though, I like the idea of getting the the cold iron arrows and the silver blanche. So I'm going to, uh, if it's okay with you, I'm going to buy some of that and put it into my whatever. Yeah, that's good. By the way, how late are we planning on going tonight? Um, at least 11. Um, we could probably even go a little bit longer if you want. Well, the thing is, there's something on TV I'd like to catch at uh, 11 EST specifically for like 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll call it at 11. I mean, I'm fine continuing after that, technically, if people want to be up longer. Take a half hour break or something. Uh, let's see where we get, and, because, uh, let's see. Uh... Yeah, let's see where we're at, and then we'll okay. make a decision close to it. Here, Do I have a grid on this map? <clears throat> uh, would you all like to uh, take five, and then we'll uh, pick up and get started again? Uh, yes, please. I got to use the restroom. Not a problem. <laughs> 